for everyone. Uh, Laura is here to answer any questions you may have as uh, we go through our presentation. Uh, we would like, you, like to thank you for taking time out of your busy workday to join us. We are here today to talk about one of the most important parts of the State Library's mission. We are the official custodian of all documents published by the government of the state of Florida. We make sure these publications are both preserved for the future and made available to the public across the state. Many of you may be familiar with the State Library of Florida already, but if not, here are some basics. We are also known as the Bureau of Library and Network Services, and we are the official provider, uh, information provider for Florida state government. We are physically located in downtown Tallahassee in the RA Gray Building with a second branch on the seventh floor of the state capitol. However, through our website, phone lines, and our mail courier service, we provide library services to government offices statewide. This slide features our hours and contact information. Please feel free to contact us with any questions you may have, and we'll be happy to help. So by the end of this hour, you will know what a state publication is, how to participate in the publications program, the benefits of participation for your agency and for the public, how to submit publications to us, and how to find copies of state publications both in our collection and in depositories across the state. And don't worry about writing this all down. We'll send you all these slides and links in a follow-up email. So what is a state publication anyway? A state publication is any document that meets three criteria. One, it was created, at least in part, with funds appropriated by the Florida legislature. Two, it was created to communicate information to people outside of your agency. Three, it is a published document. This is a fairly wide definition, and thus state publications include everything from annual reports to educational coloring books to newsletters to audio and video recordings. The main point to remember is that to qualify for our collection, it needs to have been published either in print or electronically by the agency or board with state funding. Public records is an even broader character category that includes nearly all materials created as part of the general operation of any agency of the state government or of the various county and municipal governments in the state. These are managed by agencies themselves according to the retention schedules that are determined by our sister agency, the Bureau of Archives and Records Management, also known as the State Archives. They also operate the State Records Center, which is a secure climate-controlled warehouse that offers low-cost storage to other agencies. Examples of public records that are not publications include forms, routine emails, internal agency procedures, and press releases. The requirements for public records were established by Chapter 119 of the Florida Statutes. In contrast, the statute that established the State Library and the State Publications Depository Program is Chapter 257 Florida Statutes, which was originally passed in 1967 and yes, that means this year is the program's 50th anniversary, and amended just recently in uh, 2015. Here you see the official legal definition of a state publication, along with a brief description of what is required of you as participating agencies. Based on that statute, this rule was put into place by our agency to outline our collection policy. This rule sets up submission guidelines based on the number of copies that were made of each publication. Once you receive your publications, they will be added to our online catalog, where they will be searchable online. We will also send copies to other libraries across the state, and the benefit to you is you don't need to store your own publications. We'll take care of that for you, and we'll also work to keep them preserved so that they are accessible well into the future. This applies to your electronic publications, too, once they're on our eDoc server, you can just link back to us and save yourselves the space. So, what should I send? Uh, here's a chart to show you what your agency su should submit based on how many copies were published and in what form. Note the four types of submissions. If it's report required under uh, section 286.001 Florida statutes, we only need one copy in an abstract. If you produce 40 or more copies, uh, you'll need to submit at least 35 
so we have enough to distribute them to all of our depositories. And if you aren't producing that many, you're only required to submit two copies. Uh, since they can be copied as easily as a mouse click, though, if you're submitting an electronic doc document, you only need to upload the one copy. And I will show you how to do that in just a minute. So this web page, uh, info.florida.gov slash state publications, or state hyphen publications, is your source for everything about the state publications program. From here, you can read our FAQs, policies, newsletters, reports, and, and more. You can also reach our upload form. And now I am going to uh, go live to that site so that I can share you. Um, the uh, uploader. All right. Come on in. Okay. So the address for um, the state publications form, so you can reach it directly if you want to, is statepublications.info.florida.gov. Um, and the first thing you want to do, if you don't have, uh, an, if you haven't submitted publications before, is get set up with an account. So to do that, click this green request an account button, and that will take you to a form to uh, apply for an account. Our staff will review your application within three days, and we will get, be in touch with you to confirm your account or to request more information if that's necessary. Um, and then once you have an account, uh, you can log in with your email and password using the box here on the left. And uh, I've already got my email address in there, so I'm going to go ahead and log in with my account now. I think that's the right password. I don't remember. All right. So um, after logging in, you'll see a screen that shows your most recent uploads, if you have any. So. Uh, earlier this month, I uh, uploaded a bunch of stuff from an agency that I'm going to be presenting to uh, from the Department of Transportation. So that's what you see on the screen right here now. Um, the toolbar on the left provides links to change or update your account info, uh, view a longer list of uploads, or to get more help. Um, and then to upload publications, you can either click the screen, upload a file button, or the upload files. Uh, selection from the toolbar menu. So I'm going to click on there. All right, and so click select files to choose the files you want to upload. Um, I think I have one saved here. This is an annual report from the um, uh, Florida Department of Citrus from 1972. Type in the title. All right, and then um, you can click uh, upload this file. If you you can also select more than one file, uh, and then click all upload all selected files to do all of them. And you and um, you can your publications can be in either PDF or Microsoft Word format, and you can actually upload as you can see here as much as 500 gigabytes of one at once, which is pretty huge. I actually think it's bigger than the entire hard drive of this computer that I'm that I'm on right now. Um, so click upload this file, and it's there it goes. Right. And then once it's uploaded, you see this uh, file uploaded under status, um, and then our staff will review the file, and if it's accepted, we'll add it to our catalog. So that's all how you use our state publications uploader. Um, with that, uh, we'll go back to the slides and talk more about what it is that we actually do with your publications. All right, so um, as I said earlier, part of what makes this program, what gives this program its impact 
is that your publications are available across the state, not just in Tallahassee or wherever your office is located. In addition to our own collection, we have a network of 20 other libraries across the state, from Pensacola to Fort Myers, Miami to Jacksonville, and many places in between. Uh, when you send us uh, 35 or more copies of your publications, the majority of them are sent out uh, to these libraries. And this map shows you where our, our depositories are located. Um, they're largely at universities and other um, regional public libraries. And our partnership with these libraries helps to bring Florida's government closer to its people. Um, unfortunately, a few of these locations, including the one in Volusia County, were damaged quite badly during the recent hurricanes. And um, so as far as I don't believe they're they're open right now, but we're working on um, Yeah, Volusia County had some flooding. Mm -hmm. I think some locations might be open. Yeah. But all right, so um, but and also um we have uh, recently published our own document, which is uh, the Handbook for Depository Libraries, just this summer, uh, written by Laura. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, that outlines how libraries can join our network and how they should handle our publications. And it explains the statutes and rules that we've discussed and how those apply to our depository libraries. So in addition to these new born digital publications we collect, we've begun to scan older publications and laws, so these can be made available online. And we've been working with the FSU Law Research Center to scan the full run of the laws of Florida which are one of our most popular resources from like all the way from like the mid um, from when Florida um, before Florida was a state from the territorial period right up to the present. And um, we're also scanning executive orders of past governors. Um, Laura, what, where are we up to with the state, uh, the laws of Florida, like going back? Um, we've got the extra session from 1949. So basically that forward. And um, prior to the scanning project, we had done from microfilm the territorial law, so 1822 to 1861. So we are slowly but surely closing the gap from 1862 to the 1940s. All right, there we go. Um, we also have scanned annual reports from many agencies and agency leaders going back to those agencies' creation a century ago or more. Uh, another project we've begun working on recently is scanning uh, past Constitutional Revision Commission reports uh, for the new uh, 2017 to 2018 commission meetings that began a few months ago. So that's the thing that we're working on right now. Um, uh, while we've only been able to digitize a small portion of our collection so far, the majority of their collection consists of historical state publications. We have some going back as long as Florida is, has been a state, and these give a detailed picture of what life in Florida was like at different points in our history. And we even have many publications from agencies that no longer exist. Uh, so pictured here on the slide are examples of annual reports from the Railroad Commission, Attorney General, and State Board of Health. And as you may know, we no longer have a Railroad Commission. Its nearest successor is now the Public Services Commission, which regulates utilities. Uh, the State Board of Health uh, became part of the Department of Health and Rehabilitative Services in 1969, and then uh, became the Department of Health in 1987. So it's because the State Library has been able to save and preserve copies of these publications that we still have access the, to them today. So now that you've learned all about the State Publications Collection, let's take a look inside by visiting the uh, state Publications Portal in our library catalog. The URL library.florida.gov slash publications will take you directly here, or you can click State Publications from the left-hand column of our catalog homepage. Note that while you can search State Publications from anywhere in the catalog, this portal will reset the search box to target just that collection by default. So, um, all right, let's go live to our catalog. Okay, Laura, um, what would be a good publication to use as an example? Actually, just yesterday, um, mm -hmm. the Division of Administrative Hearings scanned okay. a lot of their older annual reports in response to a public records request so they could refer people to us okay, so instead of having to copy the reports every time. So, Division of Administrative Hearings? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
select author, makes it easier. Let's go. Um, this is our second link here. Yes. Okay. Yes. So click the title to go to the full record, or you could just click this link here to go to um, directly to the electronic holdings. From here in the catalog record, you can see um, information about the, the full range of the report, um, where we have in print, what we have online, where it is in our shelves. If you look down here, you can see each copy. Um, and then if you click this link under electronic access, this will take you to a, uh, a page um, that has all of our uh, documents. And then you can click on each year, and it will open it as a PDF. And you can see the report. Um, and we're actually currently working on a new, more advanced and flexible system for accessing these. It will, hopefully, we'll get up sometime in the next year or so, right? Yes, we're really hoping. It's moving um, a lot faster than we expected. Yeah. And so it's good luck. Yeah. And so, like as you can see, like Laura said, we we've um, we we had some of these, and then they sub submitted the rest of them. So now we have the full run of this report from the, the very first up to uh, this year's. Um, so uh, that's our um, that's our uh, that's our collection. That's the um, state. Uh, that's the state publications depository program. Um, do you, does anyone have any questions? You. Um, this is Melissa. If you've got any questions, type them into the chat panel and we'll make sure that those things get answered. Also, uh, for our statistics, if there's more than one of you watching at a computer, if you can um, just let us know so that we can um, keep track of that. Uh, we fully encourage you to watch as groups, but we just like to know about it. Any questions? And while we're waiting to see if any questions come through, we are recording this. And we'll make sure that the uh, link to the recording and the slides and any resources that they talked about will get pushed out to you guys in a follow-up email. Um, so you guys can pass that along to anybody in your office that needs to see it. Okay. Okay, I don't see any questions coming in. Oh, oh, here we go. Here's one. Am I correct in understanding we're required to submit our published items? Yeah, that's correct. Yes. You you are required uh, by by statute and uh, according to the, the rules to admit to submit our to submit your published items. Um, it can uh, as you, we saw on the slide before, it can be in print, it can be in uh, electronically, but yeah. Um, and um, at the uh, state publications page Josie has mentioned, we do have a collection policy to explain exactly what is, you know, a published document, you know, what we're looking for, what we're not. And um, if you're not sure, just uh, shoot us an email and we'll figure it out. Okay, we're going to stay on it for a few more minutes to make sure our questions get answered. And there's another question. Let's see. What about user manuals for our online applications? That's a, I don't think so. That, yeah, that's a maybe, but probably not. Um, again, like review the policy uh, on the page, and if you're if you uh, if you're not sure after that, you can like send us an example, and we'll be able to give you a Laura would be able to give you a better determination of that, but. Probably not. Yeah, off the cuff, that sounds more like it would be more of a record and not a publication for the general public. Okay, any more questions? We'll stay on for a few more minutes and make sure that they all get answered. <laughs> 